I hope you cannot see the mess that is my vanity because it's absolutely insane how it's looking right now and I cannot be bothered by cleaning it up at the moment, so bear with me. <laughs> hey guys, today we're gonna talk all about how to grow your booty. This is gonna be your ultimate booty growing guide. Everything from which exercises should you be doing, how many times should you be working out, which food should you be eating. Let's start with the workout portion. I personally train my booty two times a week. I have two leg days each week and this is more than enough for me. This is how I saw my results. You can definitely do more than that. I personally like to stick to less because then I feel like I have more recovery time and I can give it my all on my leg days. I like to have a lot of rest time between my leg days. So usually I have one leg day on a Monday and then the other leg day on a Thursday. Not every week, but this would be like a typical week for me. So to make sure I have two to three days to recover in between my leg days. I like to split my leg days in one of more of like a glutes and hamstring day and one is more like a quad focus day, which you totally don't have to do, but I prefer that kind of workout style. I have an entire video about my entire workout split and my entire workout week if you want to watch that. How I like to structure my workouts is to combine compound movements and isolating movements. What does it mean? Compound movements is everything that is more heavy. I'm not sure if hip thrust count as a compound movement. I personally do it. I don't know if this is a correct way, but I don't care, okay? Hip thrust for me are a compound movement. So hip thrust, squats, deadlifts, leg press, everything that is very heavy. Then I like to have a single leg exercise because you know sometimes one leg or one part of your glute is a little bit weaker than the other and single leg exercises are just amazing for so this kind of helps you to balance out any imbalances that you might have and also make sure that you know not one side looks bigger than the other great single leg exercises are reverse lunges not my favorite but they are amazing bulgarian split squats step ups don't sleep on those step ups but you can also do single leg leg press you can do single leg hip thrust single leg rdls then i like to have some sort of isolating exercise which is usually for me some sort of hyper extensions or cable kickbacks something that really works just the glutes you can also also do like frog pumps or you know stuff like stuff where you feel like your booty is burning like that extra burn you know for the end of your workout so how many exercises should you be doing on your leg day the sweet amount is somewhere between four to five exercises you don't need more than that i also came to the realization that when i do four exercises it is usually more than enough way more than enough sometimes it's five i also like to do supersets at the end of my workout with my isolating movements and then i have like five exercises so for me usually my glute and hamstring focus day is like like doing hip thrust, then I do RDLs, then I do some sort of single leg exercise, usually Bulgarian split squats, and then I do isolating exercises like hamstring curls and hyper extensions. This is my ideal my perfect hamstring workout and then on my quad day i usually like to do squats i like to do the leg press i like to do step ups and then i usually do some cable kickbacks or leg extensions which is not booty growing so we kind of do not count that but i also want to train my legs i would say my top top exercises if i have to rank them would probably be like hip thrust rdls then it's hard. I would say step ups or Bulgarian split squats. Uh, I sometimes do lunges. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but lunges, lunges are amazing. I just personally don't like them. I hate reverse lunges, so I rarely ever do them because I do not want to do them. I prefer doing split squats, Bulgarian split squats or step ups. And then I would say hyper extensions because I always feel like oh, my glutes are burning when I do hyper extensions. And I know it's very controversial. A lot of people say squats are not the best exercise to grow your glutes. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I, I love my squats because squats are a great compound movement. What does it mean? You're working your entire body. It's great for your core, you know, for your abs to have more stability in there. I also feel my glutes burning when I'm doing squats. I 
I usually do barbell squats, which I hate more than everything. I, I little I I despise barbell squats, okay? But I also despise hip thrusts. So what are you gonna do? You know, sometimes you just have to do them things that you really don't want to do, okay? Except for the reverse lunges. <laughs> we cannot do we cannot do everything that we hate, okay? I usually do barbell squats, but you can also do them on the Smith machine. I sometimes like to do them there a little bit more because then I have a little bit more depth and I don't feel like I have to work as hard. Well, that's controversial. Or what I also really love is doing goblet squats, you know, like with the dumbbell in front of you and having your heels elevated with some plates. Mwah. Chef's kiss. I love this exercise. This is especially great in a superset with a leg press if you want to burn off your quads. I know a lot of people don't want to grow their quads, but I think training them is so important because they're gonna tone up your legs and your legs are gonna look amazing. I th that's something I, I strive for. These are my top exercises. If you want to see my workout videos, I have a quad related video, I have a hamstring related video, also including what I eat. I also have another video, it's not in the title, but I have a video where I show you my ultimate favorite, all-time favorite leg day workout, the leg day that I pretty much do all the time. To sum it up, I like to train my glutes twice a week, four to five exercises on each leg day, making sure that I have two to three rest days in between my sessions. And I like to include compound movements, which are very heavy, a single leg exercise and isolating movements. And then we need to progressive overload. What does it mean? If you do the same weight, the same rep, for weeks and months and months, you know, nothing's really gonna happen. So you need to do something to increase the intensity because your muscles are gonna get used to it. So you either need to increase your weight, increase your reps, increase the sets, do a little bit less uh, pause time, rest time, make the movement slower, which is one of the favorite Oh, I hate it actually. There are so many different ways that you can do because obviously you cannot increase your weight every week. Honestly, I don't think I'm the best example for progressive overload because I feel like I struggle a lot with increasing my weight. Progressive overload is very important, but I personally am very bad with increasing my weight on a regular basis because I always feel like I lose my form, you know? Then I increase the weight and I'm like, ah, oh, my form isn't the best today. And then I go down a little bit with the weight. So what I like to focus more on is making sure that I have the correct form and slowing down the movement, squeezing on top of my hip thrust, waiting for one, two seconds at the bottom of the squats, really feeling my RDLs in my hamstrings and my glutes. I definitely encourage you to push yourself. Usually you can lift more than you think, but also make sure to have your correct form and don't overdo it, you know? I don't go until failure. I usually, I would say the last one to two reps are very hard for me to complete. And sometimes I don't go as much up in my hip thrust movement or I don't go as low in my squat movement. And I'm like, okay, now, now, we're, now we're done. Now that's all I could do. And then take a rest or be like done for the day. Really focusing on the movement is my personal favorite tip, especially also if you do a single leg exercises instead of just going up and down really feel the movement in your glutes also single leg exercise a big tip that I never did is to start the exercise with my weaker leg I always started off with my stronger leg because it was like always very easy so I was like at least I want I at least want to have one good leg okay but now I start with my weaker leg which is usually a struggle but then my stronger leg is like it's okay it's fine you know but if I start with my stronger leg it's like super easy and then my weaker leg is like struggling that I can barely complete the exercise and always make sure that you work with the leg that should be working you know when you do step ups push with your working leg when you're doing Bulgarian split squats push with your working leg the other leg is only there to assist you it's not there to do the movement something I want to mention before we go into the food part of this video is social media social media can be very misleading with booty growing journeys <laughs> because sometimes I get into this trap also of looking at videos looking at pictures of other people and then I'm like oh my gosh how did they get these great great results and I'm working so hard why do I not get these results a lot of people do edit their videos and their photos not saying that everybody does this okay just a disclaimer I'm not saying that everybody does this but there are a lot of people out there that do that also many people do get BBLs okay it's just a thing I, I always thought like on a daily basis not 
many people do that, but actually, actually there are there are a lot more people than we think that do that. People do get BBLs and then post workout videos and show a before and after, and usually they have very slim legs, a very flat stomach, and the only thing that pretty much grew is their booty, which I always think is very suspicious. Also, some people have good genetics. I would say I'm a little bit of the good genetic type. That doesn't mean that you cannot grow your glutes if you don't have good genetics because there are a lot of people that I follow that didn't have a booty at all and then grew it immensely and naturally without a BBL or something. My tip would be to only follow your own journey because we're all different. You never know if someone has something edited, if someone got a BBL, if someone, I don't know, maybe they train more, maybe they train harder, I don't know, maybe they take stuff to enhance your performance. You never know what other people are doing. I am very, 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 very cautious of who I follow on social media because it can be very toxic. Don't compare yourself too much, even on TikTok. Just because someone is posting a video, this is how I grew my glutes in like three months or something. I'm not saying that it's not true, but usually, 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 it's very suspicious. And on that note, something that I highly recommend if you want to grow your glutes is take progress photos. Because when I grew my glutes, I took, I didn't take a lot of pictures, unfortunately, but when I look back on my photos and I thought, you know, nothing happened, nothing changed. And you don't notice it on a day-to-day -day basis. When I look back on my old photos, I was like, oh my gosh, my glutes grew insanely. Like I didn't even notice it until I looked at my old pictures. You don't notice a lot of change on your day-to-day -day basis so I highly recommend taking your progress pictures because you can look back and see all the hard work that you did and you will notice that there's gonna be a huge difference between the pictures you took in the beginning and after your glute growing journey and now to the most important part to growing your glutes is food. Food is gonna determine pretty much everything about your training. It's gonna determine whether you're gonna gain weight, lose weight, and how much your body is gonna change. Food is so, 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 so important. And if you wanna grow your glutes, you have to eat. Doesn't mean that you cannot grow your glutes at all. You will grow your glutes also if you don't increase your eating, but it will take you definitely a longer time. And they will only, you know, not grow that extremely. You will tone them up, they will look amazing anyways. But I'm talking about if you want to really grow your glutes and have fast glute growth especially, you should be eating more. What should you be eating if you want to grow your glutes? First, you need to be in a calorie surplus. What does it mean? You have a maintenance calorie, so let's say it's about 2000 calories. That means your maintenance calories are gonna be where you're not gonna gain weight or you're gonna, not gonna lose weight. You wanna increase it by 100 or 200 calories. If you do not want to count calories, which I totally understand, is you can just eat a little bit more. Just make a little bit bigger portions, add in an extra meal. That's something that I did. I had two breakfasts every day lunch, dinner, and dessert. So I was eating five times a day. If you find it hard to eat that many times, or if you find it hard to eat bigger portions, you can also eat food that is just naturally higher in calories. My personal favorites are peanut butter. I love peanut butter. It's so easy to have a lot of calories if you make a peanut butter and jelly toast or put some peanut butter into your oats. Something that I also really like are avocados because if you eat an entire avocado, half an avocado or an entire avocado, you have a lot of calories in there. I also like to increase my carbs, so having more, more pasta, more rice. You won't notice it that much if you eat food like that, that you have to eat more. I personally don't struggle with eating more. It was pretty easy for me to finally increase my calories and not be hungry all the time and finally have energy to train. It was pretty much amazing if you also want to see that. I have an entire video about my weight gaining journey. If you want to watch that, I'm gonna pop it on the screen. Also make sure to eat a lot of protein obviously your macros are also very very important i love protein shakes you can also have two scoops of protein easily if you have one shake for example after your workout and then you mix in a scoop into your oats in the morning or if you don't like that you can also mix it into greek yogurt in the morning or in the evening when you do prefer to eat it if you have eggs in the morning you can easily have toast on the side have avocado with it have butter with it and stuff like that 
just increase your calories very very easily and if you only increase them like a bit you won't also gain a lot of weight uh, because I feel like this is a big fear especially around your stomach area if you're training hard and you're only gonna increase your calories like a little bit um, you're not gonna gain weight like crazy or anything but your glutes are gonna grow the last thing I want to say is to be patient this is not gonna happen overnight but if you train hard and eat the right food you're gonna see results the only thing that you need to do is just keep going that's it you just need to keep working out eating food <laughs> which is actually amazing and the results are gonna come like I said you won't notice them on a daily basis that's why you need to take your progress pictures and in a few weeks or months you're gonna see how much your glutes Grew. I hope this video helped. If you want to see more videos like that, workout videos, food videos, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me and give the video a like if it helped you so that other people can also find my videos. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye!